we were talking offline, and, we, and you wanted my advice as a as a writer, and this is not aimed at you. This is a advice I give all young writers who get a who who uh, start making a name for themselves is you have to be prepared to disappoint your dis biggest fans, because if all you do is listen to your biggest fans. Your biggest fans are always the ones who say in response to your mistakes, you didn't go far enough, right? And that's how Pat Buchanan became Pat Buchanan. That's how Ann Coulter became Ann Coulter. Um, you start becoming a caricature and you start doing performance for your fans who just want to hear Freebird at every concert, right? And, um, and it's a real danger because your biggest fans are your fans. Like, they, th like when everyone else is attacking you, they're the ones who sort of say, you're good, you're right, stick to your guns, good for you. And it hurts to disappoint your biggest fans. But it's a huge, uh, particularly in this age of micro-targeting media, right? It is a huge temptation to just perform for your little slice of the pie exactly as they want you to. And I think back on like, um, in the early 2000s, there were people who must have felt like they won the lottery who had been obsessing about the dangers of radical Islam for a really long time. And then all of a sudden the dangers of radical Islam were huge and obvious. And there was a sort of, there was, I don't want to call it a moral panic because it was like a legitimately, like when they knocked down the world trade centers and attacked the Pentagon, it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't just paranoia. It was like a legitimate reason to be freaked out. Right. And, and it was interesting watching those guys over the last 20 years um, either change to some other thing or still sitting there banging their, you know, their, their alarm at a thing as the rest of the country kind of moved on. And, um, and you never know. I mean, it's like you never know you've, you've eaten too much until you've, you've eaten too much, right? You know, you never know whether you've, you're stuck on something for too long because the problem with the wokeness thing, and I agree with you entirely, I think it's sort of trending down, but it's still way too high, is that um, it is so pervasive that you can always find examples of it, right? It's not like you're gonna see it go away. Um, and, um, and I think one way to think about it is your point about murder, right? There will always be wokeness. I mean, we used to call it political correctness, you know, I mean, like it's a thing. Um, there's always going to be a there are going to be committed ideological cadres who have control of certain institutions that we think are crazy. They're always going to be them. The question is how much of a problem do they pose? And um, and as long as you have that in mind, you know, there, you you can sort of check yourself before you wreck yourself on like how obsessed you get with certain things, you know.